What happens when an F-1 student marries a U.S. citizen? Hi, I'm Jim Hacking, immigration lawyer practicing law throughout the United States out of our office here in St. Louis, Missouri. We are getting lots of questions off the YouTube channel and that makes me really happy because it gives me good ideas to shoot videos for. Always trying to educate you, enlighten you, entertain you, and share with you our perspective on how immigration works and what's going on. So we had a question last week from one of our viewers who wanted to know if I could shoot a video that explains what happens when an F-1 student who's on a non-immigrant visa, an F-1 non-immigrant visa, which means that they've said that their intention is to go back home when they're done with their schooling and they end up marrying a U.S. citizen here in the United States. And the question then is, can the F-1 student get a green card through marriage. We see this all the time. Of all the kinds of cases we have in the office, this is the number one type of case. We see this all the time. And so, you know, when an international student comes to the United States, some of them do intend to go back, but many of them do want to stay. And as you might imagine, being on the college campus in the university setting, they sometimes fall in love. And when they fall in love, sometimes that's with a U.S. citizen. So when it's with a U.S. citizen, that U.S. citizen has a great ability to sponsor their husband or their wife for a green card. And so the process is pretty straightforward. It's sort of a, a three-step process. One is that you fill out an application after getting married. You, you submit a form called an I-130, which is a petition for an alien relative. That's the U.S. citizen saying that I want to sponsor my, my student spouse and get them legal status to stay permanently in the United States. The other main form that you submit is a form submitted by the alien, the foreign student themselves, and that's called an I-45, an application for adjustment of status. So the international student would be saying to the federal government, I am the spouse of a U.S. citizen. I have a pending I-130, which I believe is going to be approved. And once that's approved, I want to be able to adjust my status from the non-immigrant visa that I hold on an F-1 student visa to lawful permanent residence. So that is the tier just below citizenship. That's the tier that allows you to stay in the United States permanently as long as you follow the law. And that's the one that puts you on the path to long-term staying in the United States. Now, after you submit those forms and some other forms that we've talked about on other videos, namely the travel document and the work card, you're going to have to also submit documentation that the U.S. citizen promises to support the foreign national. Now, a lot of times the U.S. citizen has just graduated from college themselves and so sometimes they need a co-sponsor, but basically the federal government wants to be sure that the foreign spouse who's becoming a green card holder is not going to become a public charge and they do require the U.S. citizen to submit tax returns and make promises that they will make sure that if the uh, foreign national gets uh, a green card and then obtains public benefits that they, the U.S. citizen, will pay them back. And if they can't, then this third party uh, co-sponsor will. Typically that's the parents of the U.S. citizen, but not always. Now, once that's all submitted, they uh, get to have their fingerprints taken, their picture taken, a background check is conducted, and in about 100 days the foreign national should receive a work and travel card and that will allow them to work temporarily. If they don't have a social security number, they can go ahead and get one. It allows the, cop the couple to go ahead and to start building a life together so that they can show to the satisfaction of immigration when they get their interview that they've commingled their assets, that they're living together, that they're both on a lease, that they have a bank account together, credit card account together, those kinds of things. After that, the foreign national um, will be scheduled for an interview along with his uh, or her spouse and in our office what we do is we bring them in the office and we pretend to have a mock interview. We go over all the questions, we sort of outline the issues, we talk to the couple about um, best practices as far as how to answer questions, how to listen in the interview, how to always tell the truth, these kinds of things, and we get them really ready so that they feel comfortable when they go to the interview because that's an intimidating process for some people and to have practice um, we keep track of all the questions that are asked, we make good notes as to what happens at interviews. We've been to hundreds of these interviews and so we sort of use a collective approach here in the office where we are able to advise our clients based on what we've seen as to what issues might come up at their interview and how perhaps best to handle them. 
Once their interview is completed, then the F1 student should get a green card if the couple has been married less than two years, and it'll be a two-year green card. And then the student will no longer be on their student visa, but they will be lawful permanent residents. And if they're still married to the US citizen, they can apply for citizenship in three years. Now, one issue that comes up with international students is once they get their work card, or even once they just file their uh, application to adjust status, can they drop out of school? And our advice is that they should continue in school to the extent possible. You don't absolutely have to. There might be certain situations where it'd be a good idea, maybe financially, to not keep going to school. But that's something you're really going to want to talk over with an experienced immigration lawyer. You're not going to want to make that decision yourself because sometimes international students come to the United States, get married right away, and don't really ever attend school. And then there's a question of whether they had an intention to enroll and complete their studies at all. And then there's a question about whether they lied at the embassy. So this is something that's a little bit delicate and probably needs to be discussed in a face-to-face -face context. Speaking of, if you want to schedule a Skype consult with us, you can certainly do that. There's a button uh, on our website to do that. Uh, we do these consultations all the time. If you have a video idea that you'd like for me to shoot, happy to do it. If you want for us to connect, find us on Facebook in our immigrant home group. We have a great discussion going on there. We have about 800 members currently and it's growing. And uh, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get updated whenever we uh, shoot a new video. So thanks a lot. Have a great day.